Uh, but just get out here and swing it. I'll show y'all how to do that too. Wow, this is good. Okay, I want to show you something. Or I want you to watch something. Okay. Now, if you notice, he's he's taking this leg okay. and and he's he's moving it out first. Now we've got that shoulder coming like this. Okay. Whereas before he was doing this. Okay, yeah. yeah. You'll see it in the video. But now because now he's starting to pivot. That's, now we're getting that pivot, but he's understanding that, hey, she wants me to move this body part. good one more time that'd be good okay good yeah all right i mean dang there ain't no reason why you, this shouldn't be y'all can't improve tremendously on this because y'all got it down the, just remember that bump you know most people and there's even some trainers they won't work the shoulders because they go oh it just takes too long well, so what but it doesn't if you know what to do well and like i said it's just building my confidence let me show you. Yeah, yeah. Once you, for that once you, <laughs> once you start get starting to get confident, then, man, it's like boom. You just get up there and nail it. Okay, I want to show you something. I'm gonna back him up like this, about three steps. One, two, three, and then I'm gonna step in here. Pretty cool. Okay, now this is what happened. Now, if you get in a struggle and he gets where he just won't do it, which I don't think he's going to do that with you now. I think he's, he's going to work with you pretty good. Uh, what I just done is I moved him back three steps. And, and in those three steps, I'm shifting his front end weight to the back. So now what that's going to do is lighten the front end up. And, and then I'm able to come in there and just move his shoulders right over. So sometimes we have to do it this way at the start because our horse just locks up and he won't move and and we do this but this is just another way and then when we get in the saddle you're going to learn how to do it in the saddle because it works really good in the saddle too all right okay we got the shoulders uh let's go back to the disengagement now this time i'm standing I want to stand, which is going to be pretty much every exercise. We'll start out in what we call the safety zone. And that's if you drew a line out from there, from the, from the front leg out here. You can't step over that line. Okay. And, you know, mainly for a couple of things. You step over the line and you're probably going to pull him around and we don't want to do that. And the other thing, you step out here and he could cow kick you. So we call that the danger zone and this the safety zone. So my communication and my energy and my pressure is this lead rope. But first I'm going to ask. All my focus is on the hindquarters. And I'm, and I'm bringing my shoulder forward, okay? This is, because I want him to pick this body language up that this position here means for him to do something. Now I'm gonna go ahead, get this fixed. Have you told them how to measure that? Not yet, I will here in a second. Remind me here in a minute. There, okay, he made a little move, I released. Okay, now that was kind of a reaction. So now I'm gonna be watching for that reaction to start coming down to more of him thinking about it and doing it nice and, and softly, it's more smoother smoothly <laughs> okay he did that with just my body language so I'm going to reward him for that
Okay, this time I want him to make it right there. He crossed that left leg. You see that left leg come over? Huge! This is pretty cool. I know, it really is. I love seeing it then on the I mean, horse. So, all we got to do, this is where I'm talking about, if, if you will focus on on what's going on in the inside, why it's going on, then you're gonna get faster results like we're getting now because if we focus too much at, oh, he just keeps rearing up, you know, it changes our whole state of mind and our body language and then our language is bad and it just keeps the horse up here all the time. Yeah. So we have to come out here, look, everything a horse does is for a reason. He has a reason. He's not doing it because, uh, you know, Carl, I don't want to do it for you. You know, he's doing it because maybe Carl is, hasn't quite communicated yet in a way he understands that this is going to be safe. I just need you to yield this way. It's going to be better for you, you know. And so we just have to keep coming in here, keeping our uh, body language, our uh, adrenaline, out of five and and the only time i raise it sometimes when we're doing leg yields and a horse gets kind of stiff moving that leg over i may have to raise my energy just to get him to pick it up uh, when i had to do this you know to get him to back up i raised my energy but i brought it right back down quickly i didn't keep it i didn't keep it here going okay now now you did it now you better do it next time so, you know, I got him to back up, and then boom, I'm back to a five again. I went to a seven, now I'm at a five. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm gonna do this one more time, then one of y'all come up here and do it. My left hand, my left arm actually, I keep it here, and sometimes I'll bring it to here, but what it does, it just protects me in case the horse wants to throw his head over. And then also, sometimes when you're doing this, the horse wants to go forward. So if he does, then I'll take that hand, point it right to the hindquarters. Point it right to the hindquarters, and I'll shut the front end down and back him up a step. Okay? All right, so what I'm doing is I got this here. Now with this hand, let me show you all what Rondo is talking about to kind of get this set right where you need it where you don't have too much or you don't have enough is you just let let the tip touch the ground and then set it right up here by your waist and then right there put your hand wherever that is right there now when i'm what i'm doing here is i'm not using my arm and my shoulders i'm using my fingers and i lay it across my fingers and then I, I let my wrist kind of roll and then I push it with my fingers. Okay? It's Come here. It's I know, I was like, it doesn't look natural. <laughs> so that <laughs> might take me a minute. It doesn't measure it. Oh, yep. where you need it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Play in my hand. There. Wait a minute. That's you got me messed up. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, around the back thumb. Okay, there, like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, see? Okay, now let your fingers right here. See, do it. Just keep. There you go. You. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, I see that. Much easier, isn't yeah. it? Okay. okay, go ahead and do the disengagement. Go on in there, okay. get your left arm, move it right up, take some of that slack out. Oh, yeah, okay. so I want to be able to point. And yeah. Backwards okay. okay, now look at his hindquarters. Okay, he's not giving, yielding, so twirl your rope. Hang on a minute. Okay, good. That was good, but hang on just a minute. Yeah, look at there. You grew that much in just a few seconds. <laughs> look at there. Wow, that's the best step he's made all day. You try it. Okay, Carl, you got to do better than that, buddy. Come on now. <laughs> oh, we have that relationship. <laughs> we are very competitive people. <laughs> oh, uh, that's so good to know that there's the connection. There's the connection, exactly.
Good job. Wow. Rub him, Carl. Rub him. Go ahead and rub him. That was good. He's really picking this up. He got a little bit quick, but I think it was coming down this hill a little bit. Okay. There you go. Stay up there with him, Carl. There. Release, Carl. Release. Rub him on his neck. On his neck. There you go. Good. 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 He's doing really good. You see, this exercise, all of them build trust. But this exercise and the backup really builds their trust quick because we're, we're asking the horse to put themselves in a position that's really, they think, we're asking them to do things that they don't naturally do. And that's like back up. And the other thing is to cross your leg. Horses would, do not want to do this. This is dangerous for them. So, uh, so anyway, that's the reason the trust really starts building so quickly. So I also noticed what you said earlier. I'm just curious why this is. You're right. Now that we're doing this disengagement, he's done with the grass. Like I haven't seen him try to get back. Oh yeah. The grass. So is that because he's in a state of mind to know now that we're working and we're learning, and it's no longer, or what? What's going on? Now? A little bit of both. Yeah. He's like, you know, they're communicating to me. And I need to learn. Okay. The other thing is, a lot of times when you're with your horse and he's constantly eating grass, it's because he's nervous. Okay. And he's, he's got to be doing something. So I Now had, he's starting to calm down. I had read one um, solution or one, you know, something to try, was to make sure they've had enough turnout time before. That also. But anyway, you know, just kind of give you an idea of how the body works. They want to lean. Horses are actually into pressure animals, naturally. That's the reason why this pressure and release of pressure is really important. That when they feel this pressure, then I want them to remember that so that when I'm applying pressure with my leg, instead of pushing into it, he's yielding to that pressure. That makes sense? Okay. So this side, you know, is pretty good. Now I'm just applying ounces of pressure. He's kind of watching the camera, watching Rhonda there. Okay, good boy. So you got all gildings? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now as usual, he's a little bit more uh i call it weaker on the right side and 80 percent of the horses out there i find you know has a little bit they protect this side a little more than they do the other so and that's normal but uh what we have to do is we just have to make sure we get in here and work a little more on this side and and get him at least to where he's yielding and he, he yielded pretty good now here in a, here in a little while i'm not going to allow him to do this right here eat because we're supposed to be working and he chooses to eat yeah, you know right so right now i'm just kind of getting a feel of him so i'm letting him do these things uh but uh yeah and because if we don't you know a lot of times people will just ignore it and they'll go oh well you know he's he's a little more spookier on this side or whatever he'll be fine but what happens is if his head's over there and someone comes walking up over here on this side that that's his weaker side he may buck or he may bolt or something like that you know not knowing they're coming so we want him to where when he's looking that way somebody comes up and says you know is this legend right hey legend and it doesn't spook him okay and then being a weaker side too a horse can do one of two things he can he's either going to push into you where you can't get the the leg yield or the side pass or move the shoulders or when you do touch him he's going to be more sensitive here and he's going to move faster but it's it's more of a, a fear thing than a like oh okay yeah i'll yield for you you see that there's a huge difference in those and sometimes people don't understand them they think boy my horse moves fast 
Yeah, he's getting, you know, he's scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to know the difference and where our horse is so we can get to that five. You know, I was talking about on that scale. Okay, all right, so we done lateral flexion. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna go to the disengagement. <clears throat> now the reason I'm doing, uh, if, if, if he was a pushy horse, or and he's always looking around and stuff like that. Do you lose me? No, but it's just awful. If you're hitting that, it's making noise. Okay. So if you can, don't hit. Can we go get the other mic and put up here? No. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll look in that box. There might be some more of those in there. Okay. I'll send you. Uh, so uh, the reason I'm starting with him, you know, he's. Like I said, he's about, he's actually about a six. He's about a six. And, you know, he's not trying to push me, uh, you know, eating the grass, that's no big deal right now. But I wanna get my horse flexible. And what I have to do is I've gotta get him uh, yielding here pretty good and right here in the hindquarters, okay? Now he's a little bit uncomfortable when I cross in this area here, he's seen, to be where he a couple of times there he didn't end but a couple of times he kind of moves it away moves his hindquarters away from me and he wants to face me <clears throat> and he may be he may be thinking that i want him to yield so we need to work on that too when we want him to yield and when we don't now if i had a horse come up here that was really pushy and bossy I would probably go directly to the hindquarters first because what we're doing uh, there on the disengaging is we're taking the power away from him. This, if he was a vehicle, this is where the engine would be. So all of his power is right there. So, uh, so yeah, in order to get that horse's attention and get him to stand still and, and pay attention, I would go there first. Uh, and sometimes I might do the backup. I may do the backup first, but but right now we're gonna we've done our uh, we're working on flex getting this horse flexible, and uh, so we done lateral flexion first, and now we're gonna do disengagement. Okay, now he's not see he's not comfortable with that, and I kind of picked that up because every time I would walk past his midsection he always moved his hindquarters away from me now that's saying that <clears throat> there's some trust he doesn't trust me enough yet to walk back there uh see he he's he's saying man i gotta get my eyes on you <laughs> you know i gotta watch you dude <laughs> so uh so we gotta work on that now uh we still haven't done the evaluation but I'm kind of wanting to check out some areas here first before we go into it. Now, you can see, you know, he's kind of got his ears back. That's not a, uh, uh, hey dude, I'm gonna bite you kind of like deal, but it's a, hey, I'm watching you. Okay, I'm not sure yet if I trust you. Does he do this with you guys? So I have really been paying attention lately to their ears to figure that out and, and be able to ask questions about it. Um, not a whole lot when there's other things around. If it's yeah. just him and me, no. They're normally straight up or like one's turned towards me, the other one, you know. But no, the okay. other two can, they pin. Yeah. When they're around each other and there's food, they pin their Yeah, back. yeah. They okay, now, really now when they really, you know, we, it just kind of depends. When it's about, say, right in here, yeah. that's a warning. Okay. Okay, that's a warning. And when it comes on down, dude, you better watch out. Yeah. <laughs> He better get out of my sp space, and uh, but he's he's kind of he's getting a little aggravated with me, you know. He says, "Dude, you're from Arkansas. You're a Razorback fan for one thing," and uh, he said, "You know, I want to eat my grass, and you keep wanting to move my feet. Look, you know, I'm number one. You're whatever, but you're not number one, you know. Yeah, so." And you can see him where he kind of he'll he'll kind of scrunch his eyes a little bit. He's I'm aggravating him, 
You know, this is aggravating him. He doesn't like it. Now, when that happens, you know, this is th these signs is what we have to watch yeah. because that's him communicating to me. It's not him saying, uh, I'm better than you are, but I have to be number one around you because I don't trust you right. because there may be a boogeyman out here. I've got to protect myself. I don't think you, Larry, can protect me yet, or at least you haven't proved it. Right. Okay? So, this stuff about horses are stubborn. My horse, is, there's, that's not even possible for a horse to do. He can't even mentally do that. No. Okay? So all these signs, whether it's even this, that's communication. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Hey, that's, hey, dude, I'm scared to death. Or, dude, I'm really ticked, and I'm afraid you're going to hurt me. So I'm pinning my ears. And I'm going to let you see my teeth, too. Yeah. You know? So... What we do when, when, when somebody brings a horse in that I, I'm going to work with that just that it you know they're just having all kinds of problems with him and he's biting him, he's kicking at them and all this kind of stuff. I put them in the round pen and I just let them do what they want to do and and I'm like, man, this is cool, you know. Instead of going, God, this is a mean horse. This is a mean horse, man. Why, why do you own this guy? You know, why'd you buy this horse? Instead, I'm going, hey, this is pretty cool. Man, look at this communication this horse has given me. And then, and then I start thinking about, wow, this horse is going to be awesome when I get done with him. You, you see what I'm saying? Because, you know, and that's a mindset. That's a mindset you need to use. And another mindset you need to use is what can I learn from my horses today? I've been doing this 30 something years. Every time I ride, I go out and ride by myself. I go, what am I gonna learn from you today, Digger? You know, Sonny. And, uh, but the thing about it is, all these signs he's been giving us and giving you in the past is communication. He's telling you from the inside what's going on. We can look at the outside, but we need to know what's going on up here. So, when, uh, you know that, that that's that's something that I really uh, sh tried to get into people's minds. Uh, the little things like that, which are really huge things, because when he keeps trying to give you, speak to you, and you're not listening to him, then the problem magnifies, and then there'll be other problems that come with it. So, but what we want to do is we want to get out there and do very little groundwork. And get that saddle on, cinch him, and get on. You know, that's what a lot of people want to do. And uh, so we miss the horse, get that opportunity to communicate with us. Okay. All right. So he doesn't like the disengaging. He doesn't like me back there. So that's okay. That'll change here in a little bit. 